All right, welcome to uh, back to biology class. Today we're going to talk about organic compounds. We're finally going to get into biochemistry. Up to now it's just been basic chem, but we're actually going to get into some stuff that we can use in biology class and that we use to make life forms and you and life forms used to uh, have as energy sources or energy storage or to build structures and etc. Okay, so today we're going to talk about organic compounds and carbohydrates. Uh, our notes going to be a little different. They uh, are like tables. Uh, kind of fill in the tables as we go. There's going to be lots of vocabulary. Uh, not that Unit 2 doesn't have enough already. I know, I know. Uh, but please, please, please pay special attention to the keys at the end. Make sure you can answer those key questions that are listed at the top of your notes. Okay? I'll disappear here for a while. I'll come back here in a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and get started on the notes. So what exactly is an organic compound? I know we hear the word organic quite a lot these days, uh, at, especially at the supermarket and things like that. But when we say organic compounds, what we mean is that it's a compound that contains carbon. Carbon has some very unique properties. Okay, It has the ability to form covalent bonds with the other elements that are important for life. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and even other carbon atoms. In fact, the, because carbon can bond with itself, it can actually form these crazy uh, complex structures. Uh, I'm sure you've probably seen them, especially like in some chemistry classes where they build with the models and they make these big geometric shapes. Okay, they can only do that because they're using carbon and because carbon can form four covalent bonds. Uh, organic compounds are built with something called a monomer. A monomer is a general term for like a building block. Okay, we're going to learn about the different building blocks, but all the building blocks are considered monomers because they're the single individual pieces. When you put them together, you get something called a polymer. Okay, so monomers are the individual pieces, and polymers are several monomers linked together, like you see here in this picture at the bottom. Now, organic compounds are built using a process called dehydration synthesis. So what do you think of when you hear the word dehydration? You think of losing water, like I don't have enough water in my body when I'm dehydrated. Okay, so this is when we actually build bonds between different monomers by removing water. Okay, so you'll notice I have a monomer here on the right, left side, excuse me, that has an H plus ion at the end, and then I have a monomer on the right that has an OH minus on the end on the opposite side. Now when I put them together and add energy, I can form a bond between the two when I remove that H plus and the OH minus, which creates water. So dehydration synthesis builds bonds by removing water and you can store energy within that bond. Okay. Now on the opposite side is hydrolysis. If I want to actually break that bond, I do the opposite process. So I'm going to add water to break the bond. Now before I had to put energy in, so what should I get out this time? That's right, I get the energy out of that bond. So energy is released when the bonds are broken. So why do we build up and then break organic compounds? Well, the reason is to store energy and then use that energy later when we need it, okay? There are four types of organic compounds. The first one is known as carbohydrates, then lipids, proteins, and nucleic acid. Carbohydrates are used for energy sources for almost all uh, organisms on the planet. They're found mostly in plants. Plants are the ones that are actually going to make the carbohydrates. Uh, they do that during photosynthesis. And it includes sugars, any, anything with sugars and starches, like breads, rice, fruit, veggies, uh, pastas, cereals, etc. Lipids are used as an energy source as well, but these are more for energy storage than they are for anything else. Uh, they're not easy to break down because they're very, very large and long uh, molecules and they can be either a solid or a liquid form. Examples would be fats, greases, waxes, and oils. Proteins are what animals use to make their bodies, so all of the organic tissues of your body, your bone, your muscles, your skin, your hair, etc., are all made of protein. Uh, they can be used as an energy source uh, if no carbohydrates are available. So people that, uh, like anorexic people or people that try to cut back on what they eat, uh, when their body has run out of fats and carbohydrates to burn through, the body will actually turn to lean muscle and start to use that as an energy source. So you will start to lose muscle mass, so you need to be careful with that. And proteins can have several functions. These can include meats, eggs, milk, beans, etc. And the last one, which we will spend much more time at the end of the semester talking about so we're only going to just discuss it right now and you do need to know that it's a type of organic compound but we really won't mess with it that much 
are nucleic acids. These are used for hereditary information, not a nutritional source, although everything that you eat does have nucleic acids in it. This would be like DNA. Okay. So let's focus just today on carbohydrates. Let's just let's just kind of go through those. Uh, they're very important. Obviously, we couldn't live without our carbohydrates. We, we really need them, those sugars and starches. But we're going to find out why exactly that is today. So what exactly are carbohydrates? Well, they're made of their building block or their monomer called a monosaccharide. And there's two different types. We're going to focus on this one with the six sides today, but you could have one with five sides. That's more for the nucleic acids. Its characteristics, um, it contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and it's unique because it contains them in a ratio of one to two to one. So that means for every one carbon, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. This is our major energy source. Their name almost always ends in an os, especially the sugars. Okay, and examples again would be sugars, starches, excuse me, fibers, breads, fruits, veggies, milks, and grains. And then again, its function is energy and energy storage. There's three different types of carbohydrates. The first one are known as monosaccharides. Mono means one. Saccharide means sugar. So these are one sugar at a piece. Examples, there's three different types. There's fructose, glucose, and galactose. Glucose is made during photosynthesis. It's found floating in your bloodstream right now. Fructose is, is found in uh, fruits, obviously the very sweet sugar. And then galactose is part of your milk. Uh, these are simple sugars, so they have the formula C6H12O6. I know that doesn't seem very simple, but trust me, it is. And they're used as a quick energy source. This would be your drawing. It would be a hexagon with six carbons. Remember, each of these lines in between represents a covalent bond. So these carbons are bonding together. Okay. And this sugar is known as a hexo sugar because it has six sides and six carbons. If I put two monosaccharides together, I get a disaccharide, which means two sugars. The three examples are excuse me, maltose, sucrose, lactose. Okay, and you can see each of them is when glucose bonds with another type of monosacchar uh, monosaccharide. Excuse me. Now, the only way it can do that, remember, is by losing water. So glucose can only bond with another glucose, glucose when it goes through dehydration synthesis. And that's why, if you look down here at the bottom, its formula is C12H22 and O11. We're missing two hydrogens and an oxygen. Okay, so it should be C12H24 and O12, but we've lost two H's and an O because of dehydration synthesis. These are the everyday sugars we come in contact with. Obviously, you know lactose from your milk. You know, uh, you might not know sucrose, but if you actually look at the side of most of your um, food labels, you'll see sucrose listed there because this is normal table sugar. And then maltose is the malt sugar. Think of like when you hear about malts, like as in like shakes and stuff like that. Your drawing for this would be two sugars. Okay. And then finally, the last group is polysaccharides. Uh, these are the very, very complex uh, carbohydrates, so they actually have the name complex carbohydrates, meaning they're big long chains. Uh, there's three different types. There's starches, which are energy storage in plants. Usually vegetables will have starches in them, especially those that are found uh, underneath the ground like potatoes and stuff like that. Uh, that's because the plants are actually using them to store large amounts of energy so they can use that later, but obviously we take those and use them for our own energy source. Fiber, These are, this is also known as cellulose. These are things that are undigestible to humans, and the only animals that can digest them can only digest them because they have help from special bacteria. Uh, believe it or not, fiber, when you eat fiber, it actually helps with your digestive tract because since it doesn't break down, it actually stays all together as like a clump, and it'll help clean out your large intestines, uh, and so it helps you go to the bathroom. <laughs> And then there's glycogen. Glycogen is how we store uh, extra carbohydrates in our body. If we're not going to store them as fats, we can store them as glycogen. Uh, these are the energy reserves in your muscles and in your liver. Uh, so when you go to take off, like let's say you're at your football practice or volleyball practice or whatever, and you go to sprint, the glycogen is going to be used up real fast in your muscles. And then once you burn through that glycogen in the first 90 seconds of your workout, then that's when you start to switch over to either the other energy sources in your body or you switch over to fat. A description would be long chains of sugars uh, that are broken down slowly. So you can see here I've got lots of those individual sugars. 
And it takes a long time for me to break each of those down and break them apart. So that's why we call those complex carbohydrates. And they're very good for long-lasting energy. That's why you should eat like um, granola bars or something with peanut butter if you're going to need energy for a long period of time. People will talk about how they carbo-load before a, a long workout or before a marathon. And that's when they eat uh, some of these starches and fibers and, uh, and things like that. So they have those extra energy reserves that they break down slowly over a long period of time so they don't get burnt out during their, uh, during their exercise. Now these are the eight keys. There's four from each section that you need to know. Again, there was a lot of material and there's a lot of vocabulary. Make sure you know the types of sugars. Make sure you know uh, the building blocks and stuff like that. But these are the four key questions that I would expect you to be able to know after you walk away from this. Okay? Please feel free to go back and rewatch. Email me if you have questions. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the lab tomorrow where we can determine what types of foods contain carbohydrates. Have a good one.